okay. and we are live. Uh, Charlotte, thank you so much for joining me today for the series of interviews with UK-based entrepreneurs. So Charlotte is a um, co-founder, right, of um, a new um, dessert on the market. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, could you pronounce the name of your company? Yes, it's Caribou. Caribou. First of all, sounds very exotic. Um, so could you tell us more? What is Caribou? What is it, first of all? Okay, so um, we make a range of really delicious carob bars. Um, some people don't know what carob is, but essentially it's a pod that grows in the Mediterranean. Um, it grows on trees, looks a bit like a flat green bean that's dried and becomes brown. Uh -huh. And it has a chocolatey taste to it. Oh. So um, we use carob instead of cocoa, which is what you'd normally find in a chocolate bar. Um, and so what we've tried to create is um, a vegan alternative to chocolate or not just for vegans, just for people who are looking for a healthier alternative to a normal chocolate bar that still tastes creamy and smooth and kind of how you'd expect a chocolate bar to be. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, so could I ask a question? I, maybe you don't know that that's fine. Um, do you know the glycemic index of your chocolate bar? Oh, I don't know if that's the top of my head, actually. <laughs> no, uh, oh, sorry, we... not, not chocolate, your bar. Because um, I'm, I'm like, like, you know, diabetic people, they're not supposed to eat uh, high glycemic uh, food. I'm not diabetic, but I'm trying to not uh, eat like high uh, level of glycemic food because of my yeah. stuff. So we have 45% less sugar than your oh. regular milk chocolate. So you oh, say wow. a, Cab a Cadbury's chocolate bar would sit, so we're talking about per 100 grams. So for a large chocolate bar, um, they would sit at about 55% sugar and ours sits at 32% sugar. So That's we're awesome. quite a lot less. We're for, yeah, 45% less. And we also use unrefined sugar. So you don't mm -hmm. get the sugar spikes. We've had some amazing feedback from people who are really sensitive to refined sugar and mm -hmm. can't eat it because it kind of sends them a bit loopy. Um, and we've had three people come back to us already and say, oh my gosh, I've tried your bar and it hasn't sent me crazy. <laughs> Oh, I absolutely love it. I'm yeah. totally going to try because I, I, I shouldn't be eating sugar as well and refined sugar. So for me, it's a big problem. I, I stopped eating any chocolates like a while ago. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking for some kind of <laughs> so how to change it, how to supplement it. Uh, what I'm yeah. doing now, I'm eating, I have it now, just uh, uh, walnuts. Oh, and, walnuts. <laughs> and prunes so uh, oh no prunes yes so my <laughs> yeah. my boyfriend always when I ask him to buy me prunes he was like oh my gosh you're such an old lady all the old ladies eat prunes <laughs> I was like well <laughs> what you can do right yeah yeah absolutely well uh, hopefully this will be a, a, a nicer tasty alternative to prunes <laughs> I hope so. Uh, but um, do, do you consider to why uh, won't won't you put like um, glycemic index uh, on your chocolate bar? I, I, I never see uh, any food with a glycemic index on it. Is it like do you think some kind of I don't know limitation in terms of food and safety? certificates or something like that um i i don't know i think it's there's so much that the general consumer i think has to see on a pack that they don't necessarily um understand what the glycemic index is mm. um i think that's probably why it's not something that we've ever thought about to be honest um lots of other of our claims you know like the vegan dairy free gluten free they're all sorts of claims that i think people instantly recognize and understand okay. but i guess unless you specifically understand about the glycemic index for different mm. types of sugars and how they affect the body um yeah it's probably that's probably not the majority of people so we haven't really thought about it actually but mm -hmm. good to have it on the radar 
So yeah, like people like diabetes, uh, who, who has diabetes and people like with other conditions, which also needs to kind of consider how much um, like spikes in terms of um, sugar they have, it will be very useful because uh, we know everything about glycemic index. Before I eat every, anything, I always check. Um, like I'm just Google what the glycemic index of this. <laughs> or yeah, this. No, that's a great, great suggestion. Um, I mean, we've had a few comments from people who are diabetic saying, is it suitable? I have an uncle who's diabetic. Mm. And um, he said to me that when he looks at the back of pack, he said it basically means that if I could eat one square of Cadbury's, I can eat two squares of yours because of mm. the reduction in sugar. So mm -mm. that's how he looked at it. Obviously, I think you'd still um depending on the type of diabetes you have we probably yeah. probably won't want to eat a whole bar i think you know we're not a no sugar product but we are a lower sugar product that's great that's great what else do you have as ingredients in your bar so we use um so like i said carob before we use cocoa butter like you would normally find in chocolate but the cocoa butter is um the part of the cocoa bean that doesn't um contain the brown you know the, the brown powder is such it's separated it's the fat which makes chocolate um stable and so that's why we use it in our product so mm -hmm. it's a, a stable product that can sit on the shelf it won't melt and all the rest of it um also the good thing about using the cocoa butter as opposed to cocoa generally is that you get a lot of people who have got sensitivities to caffeine mm -hmm. and something called theobromin and um carob doesn't have any of those in the product and in the ingredient naturally so again like I said with people who are sensitive to sugar we've had people contact us saying oh I get certain types of migraines because of chocolate so cho chocolate induces migraines for me will your product do that and actually the great thing is is that because we only use the white you know the, the fat as such in our product um, it it allows people who are normally sensitive to that to eat to be able to eat it as well um we a lot of people say oh my gosh your product it's so creamy how did you get it so creamy what witchcraft is this <laughs> and that's um that's because we use um coconut so we substitute the milk that you'd normally find in milk chocolate with coconut um Ooh. yeah and so obviously in our coconut flavored bar you can taste it but actually in our orange and our mint bars you can't really taste the coconut it kind of is covered with the um you know essential oils that we use mm -hmm. um, and so we have coconut sugar as well so that's the unrefined sugar that we use and it kind of comes from the sap of the coconut tree and then they kind of um, boil it and kind of bring it crystallize it and that's the form that we receive it in so wow. um, yeah. we also use um, a chicory root fiber in our product that's kind of a gut healthy prebiotic type of fiber Mm -hmm. um and then we use vanilla vanilla flavor you know like a vanilla powder nice. or peppermint oil or uh you know an orange oil depending on which flavor you've got <laughs> that's that's so great i like the ingredients uh i heard that when you eat chocolates it kind of help you produce endorphins yeah does it uh, does it work the same for carob seemingly from the feedback that we've had i would say yes it absolutely <laughs> does. i mean we, we had we've had so many people come back to us and say um and you know this is just our first wave of um feedback we've only officially launched on the 9th of november congrats for that. so, that's awesome thank you very much Thank you. And so we are, we're getting some feedback to you now and um, people are like, oh my gosh, I'm like instantly addicted to your product. It's so good. Um, I went to eat one bar and I've eaten all three. <laughs> so yes, I would say that it definitely is giving people like the, the satisfaction that chocolate gives people, but we're also kind of hearing from people that they feel kind of satiated so some people eat it and say you know i eat it and i feel great and i i, I feel like i've um i've had enough you do also then get the people who are like oh i'm gonna eat three bars in a row because it's so great <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting okay i definitely need to try so if i want to buy your chocolate how i can do it 
Um, so at the moment, we only um, are list, we're only selling through our website. Mm -hmm. um, that is um, eatcaribou.co.uk. Um, and we are working now to kind of try and get out into as many independent health like health food stores um, and coffee shops. But, you know, we're just at the beginning. <laughs> we've got Definitely. we've got time. Yeah. Is it difficult to get into like Holland and Barrett or something like that? Um, there, it's tricky to get into any major retailer. Um, we've had some good conversations with Holland and Barrett in the past. And um, for us right now, um, it doesn't work financially, but I'm sure in the future um, there'll be conversations that will be opening up again. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I think it's how you can first get into these big retailers, right? Yeah. I, I think straight go straight to Sainsbury's will be a bit well i don't know i don't know much about selling products my company is but like selling services so for me it's a bit different and i have this dream that one day i'm gonna open the second company which gonna sell products and I haven't i don't know what products are gonna be maybe something like low uh, glycemic index <laughs> uh, to solve <laughs> problem i have and I think it's how all businesses starts, whether you're solving problem uh, for you or for your dear ones. So it's how you kind of relate, how you started your company. Okay, so um, my background is not in food at all. And um, had I known maybe how tricky it is, I, I might have looked at a different business model, but um, in I used to have a wedding planning business and so kind of operations and, being calm under pressure and all of those things I had this skill set and I said to my husband one day I said you know I think I want to look for another challenge and I really want to work with people every day in an office um I mean I could just be normal and get a job <laughs> I'm not normal <laughs> I like a challenge um and so I said I also really want to build something scalable and um we went to Australia in 2017 on a family holiday and I said look whilst we're here let's just see what what they do in Australia you know in the health food shops and let's see if there's anything that kind of grabs our attention because obviously food is scalable you can grow mm -hmm. a scalable business um and so we were you know going into as many health food shops as we could see we were taking pictures of all the shelves and just you know going back to our hotel room in the evening when our daughter was asleep and having a look at the pictures and trying different stuff and one day we were in Sydney and it was raining and we were hiding in a health food shop because, I mean, it was really raining. And um, our daughter was getting really upset. She was only one. And so I kind of grabbed a product off the shelf and bought it. And um, it was a carob based product. Oh. And so um, ironically, um, in Australia, they grow one percent of the world's carob. So I think it was meant to be, you know, they're the, they're the smallest um, they're the smallest producer of carob in the world. Yeah, I managed to find a carob bar in Australia. <laughs> and so um, I kind of tried the I tried the bar. I gave some to my daughter and I was looking at the back of the pack and it was just really intriguing. I thought, oh, it's a nice product. And, you know, it's chocolatey, but I can I know it's not chocolate. And um, I couldn't shake the idea. I just. I said to my husband, I, I think there's something here for the UK. Oh, wow. you know, I, uh -huh. I think I think there might be something here. And so I kind of went away and I did loads of research and I then started buying ingredients. And I remember my very first sample that I made, I kind of had this big metal bowl and I <laughs> put all of these ingredients in a bowl and melted it down. And I think I expected it to set and taste amazing. And it was so disgusting. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> And um, see what I mean about my, you know, naive optimism. <laughs> and so um, what happened then was I, I did research and I said, well, how do people who make chocolate on a small scale, how do they make it? Like there must be a machine or something. And, um, and I found a small tabletop refiner from secondhand off eBay. And that's how I, I started making it at home. Um, and I used to just I had obviously I had my other business at the time and I had my, our daughter so I was fairly busy and I just did it in my weekends and in my evenings and just played around and you know just messed around really I had I've got my book downstairs which has got all of the iterations of all of the recipes I think we're oh on the final one was about 45 different yeah we're in recipe 45 or something 
Um, and every time I just wrote down what worked, what didn't work, and then we moved on to the next recipe, the next tweak until we got it. And so, yeah, that's, that's kind of how we started right from the beginning. I love it. I had goosebumps when you were to uh, talking about how you um, first start uh, mixing it in your bowl. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I love the story. Um, Thank you. What about your daughter? Is, is she, does she allow to eat uh, your bars? Yes. Um, one funny story. I mean, I now have a son um, who is 18 months and um, he's now learned the word caribou it comes out like aaboo oh, so <laughs> he asked for it it's very sweet um but yes they they both really love the product um we've had you know quite a lot of feedback that um you know little people like it too which is amazing i yeah. mean i'm just thinking in, like i mean it's very easy for you to imagine that uh, your mom is making like sweet bars and i'm just thinking oh my gosh my childhood could be so different (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's funny she i remember her teacher at school said to me one day adelaide says you've been to a chocolate factory today is that true and i was like yes (laughs) (laughs) our our product gets made in a real life chocolate factory so she was completely right (laughs) That's awesome. So now you produce your uh, bars in the chocolate factory. Yeah, so we have um, we have two factories that we work with. The first factory makes chocolate. That's their day job. Um, and they also make our carob mixture for us as well. Mm-hmm. And then it goes to a second factory where they melt it back down and they put it into the molds. Oh. Um, and then they, yeah, and then they package it for us as well. It's very difficult process, very complex. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think chocolate making is um, chocolate making itself is quite a technical um, process, um, and a lot of chocolate factories, believe it or not, or a lot of businesses who produce chocolate don't actually make it themselves. It comes from another factory. <laughs> a part of uh, production itself, um, like chocolate business or any other business or sweet business. Um, requires a lot of different parts so i checked your instagram and uh, your website and i wanted to say i love your design usually when when i have like calls because i have marketing company and it's kind of what i do what what i'm expert at i look at people's instagram and see like what i could do better what we could help with uh what's like put more like people should put more attention at and i honestly i do love your instagram um it's very Thank professional you. and i like the graphics i was wondering who does graphics for you um so the lady who has designed all our packaging and um she does everything for us is she's called jess and she actually works for us oh full nice time. well not quite full time yet four days a week um and she's a friend of mine we've um, worked together from my very first idea of what I wanted the packaging to look like and I think we're now version three but we're keeping this one (laughs) I like it I I, I like your packaging I think it's yeah I love it yeah she's very talented yeah she's uh, an illustrator actually um in her spare time she's a a children's book illustrator Mm. that's where um she absolutely loves doing that in her spare time as well so yeah we're very lucky to have her because she does she does all our creative um it's amazing to have her in house because that's what people you know it really catches their attention yeah and definitely. so I think it's a really important thing that we've kind of invested in her to be able to do that for us definitely I would uh, only I think look at like arts something like that because i didn't see any ads uh, of yours but it can be a bit costly yeah we do we do do some ads in the background as well we um at the moment they're kind of the dark ads that people see in insta stories and mm-hmm. um, but we're very very targeted um with who we who we reach out to so we've got a few different demographics of people that we know um really our products really resonate with i mean how did you find us originally was it on linkedin yeah, I think my co-founder sent me your profile and uh, she said something like, oh, look what I found. <laughs> so it was um, something like that. Um, but uh, I think we were 
initially looking for companies uh, which are just starting to kind of because when yeah. the idea of our channel is uh, to show young generation that it's very easy to start business if you really believe in it and uh, yeah. i talk to all these people who are like so passionate about different different things like you're passionate about uh, uh, car bars the other people are passionate about um children's book other people about something else and it's just fascinating and the idea like there are so many different ideas and you can totally just go for it you just need to see the yeah. stories and it's what we're trying to do on the channel amazing love that <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, well we're trying to go we're trying to give back because uh when we just um we started our company when we were at the university and we had a lot of support from um, our local um, accelerator, from all different business advisors, uh, from the uh, Glasgow City Council. So it's a lot of help and uh, we're trying to give back as, as much as we can in the way uh, we can. And uh, I don't know about you because um, you started your business, you had support from your husband, uh, but some people are struggling to connect uh, uh, to other yeah. people during this um, like during their entrepreneurial journey they feel very alienated and alone and um, support from the entrepreneurial community is extremely extremely important so yeah, it's what absolutely yeah we um mm -hmm. my husband works um he he doesn't work in the business right now but he's my my support network for sure but we have um We've been really fortunate that we, the food community particularly, there's some amazing resources out there. So we tapped into something called Bread and Jam and Young Foodies. And both of those resources kind of help connect you with other young food brands. Um, and there's people who have been there, done that, and they're so willing to give you their time and to give you their advice. And, and I'm the same, you know, when people approach me and say, oh my gosh, like, I love what you're doing but I've no idea how to get there myself. Like, can you give me any advice? And because I've been given so much time and advice for free, like I really enjoy being able to, to give back as well because it's, it, like you said, it's a really, it can be a really lonely journey even when you've got a husband for support because when you live and breathe it every single day and there's a lot of pressure on you as well as the founder of a business, you know you've got I've got wages to pay um we've got overheads to cover you know that bit can be pretty scary at times I'm not gonna imagine. lie um so in yeah terms it of, can be really um it can be a bit overwhelming in terms of um wages to pay um do you support your business by yourself or you have investors or you have um what uh, financial institutes basically instruments you use to uh, get like to fund your startup yeah so we um have actually funded it all ourselves up until now um you know that scary thing of doing a remortgage <laughs> uh, <laughs> and doing you know we've raised some finance um through friends and family and we were able to take advantage of, of the kind of government bounce back loans that were available this year yeah and i guess it has so to be what? some benefits that come out of covid and that was one of them for us mm -hmm. um because obviously it meant that we could take on the debt ourselves but it means that we can get launched and we can start building some traction before we go out to investors which is something we will do when we we look to scale more um, and when we look to scale at more of a rate as well. So I'm, I'm hoping so looking that. forward. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> forward to see a uh, success, Charlotte, and I'm 100% uh, sure it's going to be a um, tremendous success. So uh, good much. luck with Carbo and uh, I love your design and everything uh, you're doing. The last part I need to do is to try it. So I'm going to look yes, and I will send you a sample so you can try oh, it. You nice. Can... <laughs> so <laughs> here we go. Uh, Charlotte, I'm going to move us to the second part of the interview um, where I'm going to ask you just a few questions and uh, ask you to answer as short as possible. One, two words, a one sec a sentence maximum. So the first question mm -hmm. was this, what okay. entrepreneurship for you? 
hard work. Oh, nice. <laughs> so uh, today I had two another interviews and uh, another entrepreneur said is yourself. Um, and another one, mm, forgot the second one. Okay. Uh, what is the most important in life? Balance. I would say balance. Yeah. Nice. Being able to spend time with your family and do your work, but not burn mm. yourself out. Nice. Um, uh, do you see yourself living in different countries in the future? I definitely wouldn't rule it out. Okay. And if it would be a different country, what country it will be? We went to New Zealand once and it was really beautiful. I could definitely <laughs> spend some time there. I, I can sense another talking fun out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, how do you see yourself in five years? Apart from sitting on a beach, drinking a cocktail. <laughs> Please. Um, I, would, <laughs> I would say Please um, I, the, the founder of a successful, well-known brand in, in households. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm very happy uh, to the last answer. Your uh, big, big, big uh, boss in the future. So looking forward. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Charlotte, for joining me today in the series of interviews with UK Best Entrepreneurs. Guys, please uh, try uh, Charlotte's... Uh, can you pronounce it? I, I, I. Caribou. Caribou. Uh, try Charlotte's Caribou uh, bar, which made not from chocolate, but as delicious. And I'm going to try it as uh, Charlotte's promise. And uh, we're going to see to it. <laughs> so, guys, please uh, stay in touch and check uh, Charlotte's Instagram for Caribou. Charlotte, what's the, um, how we can find your Instagram for Caribou? Okay, so it's Caribou UK, C A R O B O O UK. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add you right now. Uh, guys, stay in touch for more interviews with Scottish entrepreneurs.